a new rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe. And ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. And let me tell you, you're going to want to be notified. Some of these videos, some of these videos are so good, I could even publish them for free on a, uh, a worldwide communication video network. I could do that, right? They're that good. They're that high quality. In fact, by jiggery, I put it on too. <laughs> like, share, subscribe, comment. All those things are very, very, very good. We got lots of news. Lots of, I'm recording this on Thursday, the August 25th. Uh, uh, hopefully, nothing breaks in the next uh, uh, day or so before this comes out. If something breaks, I will, I will cut in probably. And uh, all that. I'm, I'm going to be really begrudged to do that because when I, to do that, I got to make the video, right? I'm planning on making it today, which I'm, I'm doing that now, right? That bit's going on. Uh, uh, then I upload the video. Uploading is is a thing because I have to upload it to Rumble. I upload it to uh, 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 YouTube. You know, I upload the video. I make the thumbnail. Everything's done, and then it's kind of gutting to have to uh, go back and like break it open and redo it and change everything. So hopefully nothing happens, but ho hopefully it does. I mean, like hopefully something that really warrants me doing that. You know, they're bringing back William Hartnell somehow. <laughs> Wouldn't, yeah, that, you know what? They're bringing back William Hartnell. I guess that deserves its own video, right? I think at that point, we, that, that can... Uh, uh, I mean, how? How would you do it? Is it a hologram? I don't know. Maybe cloning? I do not know. Wouldn't it be weird to say, we brought back William Hartnell? Oh, my God, let me see it. It's a baby. I'm like, no, that's not what I was made. All you got to do is wait six years, and we can, have, we can remake uh, Marco Polo. No problem. Just six years from now... On the dot, we'll start, okay? Uh, hopefully. <laughs> but then I guess you've got to, like, remake his life uh, to be the same kind of life. I, if you remember, what's that book? The Boys from Brazil, they made a mediocre movie of it where they had all these uh, uh, clones of uh, 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 the naughty na uh, naughty chancellor. Uh, the, the name begins with H. I'm not going to say his name. I'll get in trouble. Uh, naughty chancellor from Germany in the 1930s. Very naughty person. Uh, one uh, in charge of the, the National Socialists. So they made lots of clones of him and in, uh, throughout Brazil, right? And because uh, that person's father died uh, when, when he was young, they, they, the plot starts with all these people, all the fathers of the of the cloned uh, uh, naughty person uh, uh, being killed, right? Because to, to, to shape his life. So you would have to do that as well, right? Otherwise, wouldn't it be weird, right? If you if you clone uh, 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 William Hartnell. <laughs> this is a really weird aside. If you clone William Hartnell, right, and you wait till you age him and you know, wait 60 years and he gives a performance like Jodie Whittaker, that would be strange. That would be strange. I, I, now somebody's got to kind of dub that. Wouldn't that be incredible? Ooh, a key thump. Oh, I've always wondered what it looked like. What's that, Bill? The end of the universe! <laughs> uh, um... Okay, I digress. Ha hello, how was everybody? <laughs> uh, uh, my name's Lee Lebeck and the rapper of Another Planet. Like, share, subscribe. That'll be Fan Dabby. A uh, Fan Dabby Double Dozy. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, sign up to my uh, email newsletter called on Substack. Uh, uh, I send out a bunch of free stuff on there as well. Maybe today. Maybe today is the day I send out those uh, backups from uh, from Alan Moore. I've got a new scanner over here, right, right over there uh, uh, that I just been meaning uh, meaning to get to. So I send out free stuff on my uh, Substack all the time. I think tomorrow you're getting Interference Book Two by uh, uh, Lawrence Miles. It, but if anybody knows I put out and think that's that's actually in print, please let me know because I don't want to do that. Because firstly, I can get in trouble, uh, and secondly, I think people should you know uh, uh, support their uh, uh, they're, they're creatives. Uh, me, me being somewhat creative myself, so I, I'm all up for that. Speaking of being supported creators, sign up my pay sub stack. Uh, uh, sometimes I send stuff out of that. Not often, but I do. I do. I should send it more. Should send it more. But you know. Uh, uh, I am human. What can I tell you? I'm just, I, I, I'm just not, I'm human. It's like, well, I'm not, I am human. I want to be very clear. Uh, 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 as far as I know, uh, again, I, I, I might be implanted by aliens. I do not know. As far as I know, I'm human. But it's like, I could just use more time. If I had another, like, 12 hours a day, man, can I get stuff done. And right now, I just got a new computer about a week or so ago. Oh, God, it's changed my life. Like, they're the waiting for it to, like, freeze up. Uh, uh, is no longer there, and that took about half my day, right? No, I'm getting to like, uh, uh, I, you know, I have a map, map of work I'm going to do in the day, map out my day. I'm like getting done with it by 
two <laughs> rather rather than five, right? And so, and so, uh, uh, so I'm, do, I'm doing more stuff, but no, no I, I, but most of them are just like for me. They're like, really? How did that happen? I, I guess that just happened. Anyway, like, share, subscribe, comment, sign up my Substack, uh, uh, sign up my pay Substack, and let's start looking at the news, all the different news So we're going to start over here. Uh, which is the headline, uh, uh, obviously. Uh, 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 woke writer says Doctor Who isn't woke, and woke doesn't exist anyway, so don't ask me about woke. Uh, uh, Armando... Uh, La Shouldn't that be a capital L? Armando... La Unless it's, is that an I, or is that an L? Iannosini. Uh, Iannosi. Uh, Dismisses Doctor Who woke criticism, backs colorblind casting. So, uh, um... Something can be have colorblind casting without being woke, right? It, it, it I think, yeah, there's a one of the great, uh, um, what's the word? One of the great defenses against against uh, uh, the accusation that you are woke, you are you've done is woke, Rah! right? One of the great is that one well, that doesn't mean anything, and you know, to be fair, they have a point. It's not like it's a uh, a term that's codified in the Oxford English Dictionary. The, but it, and also people don't really define it, which is, I mean, it's understandable. People don't really define words in general. But we're dealing, we're we're dealing with new words. It, it's it's uh, uh, much trickier. And it's something like woke does change, right? Because essentially it means liberal, liberal, pro, um, progressive, and that that vastly has changed in the last few years. Like twenty fifteen, it was same sex marriage, and now it's uh, uh, there is no sex. Right? Unless you're a kid when, uh, oh, that's all good. As much sex as you like, baby. Uh, uh, which seems a bit strange. But, you know, liberal progressivism uh, uh, does mutate daily. Absolutely daily. But if you want a, uh, in terms of uh, um, entertainment culture, I would say, and I've used this definition a lot, it is the uncomfortable platforming of ideology uh, on an, a previously existing a successful franchise with uh, which has a built-in fan base. Uh, that's the first tenet. The second tenet of being woke is they normally have two different I ideologies, some that everybody agrees with, which is what we're going to see here. Like, black people are people too. We, should, we shouldn't we should be scared of seeing black people. Nobody is. No, I mean, I mean, honestly, if you are, if you're somebody who gets upset by seeing black, black people, just let me know, right? I, I'm really into it. Come on the channel. I would love to hear it, right? I would love to hear it. So this, don't confuse that with somebody saying, I think uh, uh, the character of Doctor Who uh, uh, is white, right? Because uh, 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 there's a lot of people out there who think that, and they think that because the character of Doctor Who has been white for 60 odd years. So a uh, reasonably strong argument because the character of Doctor Who has been white for 60 odd years. My, my own personal take on it is I, 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 I really see that being colorblind. So that's the first, you know... Uh, um, Thing. Yeah, but uh, 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 you have ideology that everybody agrees with. Gay people are people too, right? You shouldn't be terrible to people, right? You, all these things that everybody agrees with. And then, you know, you have the, the ideology that nobody agrees with, that, uh, well, very few people agree with, that one can self-define their physical characteristics against what their physical characteristics are. Uh, uh, I'm a boy, but I'm a girl. I'm black, but I'm white. I'm white, but I'm black. Yeah, all these things, right? All the, and it's very strange. I mean, there's a guy... Uh, um, who's transitioning to be Korean? I, I read about a few months ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, um, I just don't think most people are 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 up for that. No matter how much we're screamed at, that we have to be okay with that. And, and honestly, you know, the idea that we're causing suicides by not being a hundred percent on board with that. Uh, uh, I mean, in a few years, we're gonna have the data. Uh, from uh, all the uh, uh, what is it? The epidemic, the pandemic of transitioning youth that we're having right now, which we've never seen, as far as I know, in the history of our species. What I think think things going on there is it's really creepy. Okay, I think I think young girls, generally speaking, when they hit puberty, are very uncomfortable with their bodies, right? And I think people are looking uh, to use that discomfort. To convince, to, to validate their own uh, uh, worldview. I think that's going on. I think there's a lot of uh, uh, Monkhausen by proxy going on, which is where, which is when mothers uh, um, afflict their children in some way to uh, uh, get to get sympathy. So this is some kind of this is a 
byproduct of that. They're using their children to uh, uh, elevate themselves. And so I think, you know, these people like rushing to get take their daughters for a double mastectomy when they're 12 or a hysterectomy. You know, I think that might be I think that's a, that might be a psychological complaint that's actually fueling that. Anyway, the data the the, 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 the data about suicides is going to be uh, I, I, I'm terrified to see it, right? I think in a couple of years we're going to have the data of the suicides of the people who have tra transitioned, which I think is going to be way higher. Way, 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 way higher. And quite understandably too. I think if it's... Uh, 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 this is why all every, you know, civilized... All the European countries that we use as a model for this are all backing off. Like Sweden's kind of over there. Like, no, uh, uh, maybe this isn't so good. Anyway, anyway, so that's what woke is. The third tenet of woke, which is is less true now, is uh, the quality massively dropped. So uh, without that, is something woke, is something not woke? I would call the current era Doctor Who woke, right? That, that, that's my, I think it fits in that de definition. All three things there. Sandman, I don't know. I think the quality of it was pretty darn high. I, I liked a lot of it. Uh, um, but I also think Neil Gaiman wants to feel good about himself. Uh, and so I think saying that I see no difference between this super white person uh, death and a very black person playing death. I see no difference. I'm colorblind. You, you're full of shit, mate, right? <laughs> Even though she did a fine job, uh, uh, whoever named the actor playing death, uh, uh, it's just so obvious that Neil Gaiman needed her skin color to be black to feel good about himself. And I, I think if he ever was honest about it, he'll be horrified. <laughs> I don't think he really would be. But, you know, uh, uh, it's hard to swim against the current sort of society. Fine. So we have this guy, uh, Armando Eniasini, who's brilliant, right? I've never seen anything he's done that it hasn't been brilliant. Well, most of us know him from the, uh, the thick of it, the, the Capaldi series. But again, Brilliant. He went on to do Veep in in, in the US, which which is really weird because it's so anti woke, right? Veep is a series, especially the last one, uh, uh, which is just r relentlessly taking the piss out of uh, uh, American politics and specifically left wing politics, like like Hillary Clinton. Uh, but it used to be, yeah, you would take piss out out, uh, out of all the politics. It didn't really matter which side of the of uh, of the R you're on so yeah it's i've never really seen him as being somebody uh, uh particularly woke right uh uh so uh, but so he's a huge talent right he's a huge massive talent uh um so let's hear, hear what he has to say i've read this article well it just came out today we're reading it right now am i going to see dismisses doctor who woke criticism backs colorblind casting again I, I don't know how you can dismiss the criticism that jody whittaker's era hasn't been woke right it's uh, uh, it's been used to plow. It's an existing popular fa uh, franchise. It's being used to platform ideology, which is a mixture of completely accepted and completely unaccepted. Uh, uh, and, and please, really, are you going to debate me on any of this? Of course, it is. All right. I mean, I don't know what. But look, people, people uh, 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 see what they want to see. Uh, uh, to a such a degree, I am. Um, blown away, right? I'm really genuinely blown away. We, I, I'm not going to talk about politics. I'm talking about something local. We had a uh, controversy in my my local community where a uh, uh, revered uh, uh, religious uh, uh, official, well, his his position was was revered anyway. Uh, in my opinion, uh, was being a bit naughty and not following the Jewish law, right? Uh, People didn't like that. People didn't like that at all. So this went on for a long time. This went on for about over a year. And it culminated in uh, um, in this guy very openly violating Jewish law in a, in a majorly central way, very, very publicly. Like this this official is somebody who gives public, public addresses. And on a public address before... This huge uh, day of day of Jewish mourning, where we literally for two thousand years sit on the floor and cry because we speak badly about one another. Uh, uh, he he violated those laws. He broke those laws, right? Uh, uh, and yeah, that just happened publicly in fact, for forty five minutes. Normally, these public speakings are like ten minutes. They, for forty five minutes, and then he did it again, and then he did it again, like three times over. Right? It was huge. It was huge. Uh, um, so a lot of the the uh, more traditional people in my synagogue very much supported this uh, uh, this this official, uh, and, and then and now they left them with egg all over their face, right? I mean, much like you know, if you've hated Trump, 
the whole world situation right now makes you look a bit stupid, right? We had world peace and money, and now we don't. Uh, it's just the reality, mate, right? Uh, uh, so he had eight, so they had eight, so they, they now believe, like, they now, and they really believe that he didn't do anything wrong, even though they know specifically what he did wrong in front of them. People see what they want to see. It's so strange, right? It's a, and, and look, and the one thing people don't want to see is them being wrong. That is the thing driving everything now. Nobody wants to admit they're wrong, right? Under any circumstances. Uh, the thing of it creator says British television needs to be much more reflective of uh, who we are as a country. So I was speaking to somebody uh, uh, working in the, in, in the entertainment industry yesterday. Uh, um, somebody who was, I can't tell you anything about it at all, which drives me insane, right? Because so much interesting stuff, right? Somebody reasonably famous for Doctor Who fans. Uh, it's, uh, I can't give any more clues than that. Uh, 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 and, and you know the uh, we're talking about this type of thing, right? They, they, well, like why why does EastEnders get 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 such few viewers nowadays? It gets what two three million viewers, if that. It's because uh, it doesn't reflect the country that it's. They, oh, it doesn't reflect the audience. The the I think the demographic is not like se England is. 78% white? Yeah, white <laughs> yeah, so That's quite a lot, large percentage, right? Uh, or maybe even more. Uh, uh, or maybe 87. I can't remember. The guy told me, and I, can't, I, I really can't, can't remember. Uh, uh, but on TV, if you watch it, you'll say it's like 50% gay, 50% lesbian, 50% black. Yeah, it, it's not reflective. And, that, and that's why I think people turn off. People don't sit around and think, hmm, I wonder why I'm not going to watch uh, a bit of Stenders now. No, because it just has no interest to them because it, it's from a weird alternate dimension that they can't relate to because it's representing an alternate dimension they can't relate to. What's really going on with the uh, representation uh, is that they, uh, the people doing it want to change uh, really want it to be different, really want the demographics of the world to be different, really see, uh, uh, really only hyper-focus on the uh, uh, the bad things that, that white people in white society have done, right, o over the last few hundred years. Uh, uh, and they don't look at it, and they look at it very much out of context, because I think that's good, because they want to uh, feel bad about it, right? Uh, um so uh, uh, so they they trying to like re redress the balance, but it's just got insane, right? It's just got completely, completely insane. You know, I was talking to somebody about like the big finish release Stranded, which is uh, had Paul McCann uh, trapped in oh, 2020. It was trapped in 2020 Earth uh, uh, in Camden, I think, or somewhere around there, Baker Street, maybe. I don't know. He he looked at which was a, a nice idea, and I like that idea. I was talking to the person about it. I said, yeah, it'd be nice if there was anybody straight within like a like hundred mile radius, right? Most people are straight, right? And if that doesn't mean I hate gay people. That doesn't mean I don't want to see gay people anywhere. No, it just means reflect the freaking society. So what are you talking about, Armando, right? What are you talking about? How is it? Yes, it's going to be more reflective. That means it's going to be less inclusive, right? Because inclusive means... Uh, 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 being exclusive, right? Uh, the thing of a creator, Armando Iannaschini or Lucini, I can't remember. I think I'm gonna say Iannaschini uh, has argued for more colorblind casting in TV and films, saying more diversity on screen makes uh, makes what we make better. I don't think so, right? I don't think so. I think it's uh, gone into uh, an age of tokenism, right? I really genuinely don't think you're right about this one at all. Uh, speaking at this year's Edinburgh Festival, Edinburgh TV Festival, Yonashini also addressed uh, those who label BBC Doctor Who as woke following its uh, cast of the uh, first woman, Jodie Whittaker, and more recently a black man, Shooty Gutwell and Lee Roll. Utter, utter nonsense. It was, okay. No, technically, it wasn't nonsense. Yeah. People did label it woke after those things happening, but it wasn't those things happening that made them label it as woke. No, it was uh, the massive drop of quality and the platforming of, of very, very strange ideas. That's really weird. My, my printer just, just made a sound at me, saying, download in progress, caution, do not turn off the printer. Oh, okay then. Uh, 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 I, I'm not going to argue with you. You're a printer. You know what? Uh, you you know what you're doing. But yeah, like, yeah. No, I think this is absolute nonsense. I really genuinely do. Uh, uh, 
I don't, it, 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 you know, it's, uh, uh, it wasn't Jodie Whittaker. It wasn't her having a vagina that was the problem. It was her being wildly miscast. Uh, it just, and it wasn't fair on her, right? It wasn't fair on her to because she just wasn't, in my opinion, able to pull off the role in any way, shape, or form, right? Just totally wasn't able to do that. Uh, uh, Judy Garber, I'm, I'm, I'm a lot more optimistic about. Now, the, you know, the, and the reason I think she wasn't able to pull off the role is uh, several reasons. But, you know, there's a, a, a the Doctor is a masculine role, which is a thing that's taboo to say in 2020, 2022, isn't it? it? But it is. It's a masculine role. Now, you can have a woman play a masculine role. Um, I haven't seen it, but I only saw the trailers for that thing on HBO, Gentleman Jack, which had what's the name who was the TARDIS in the Neil Gaiman episode. Blimey, it all ties together, doesn't it? Uh, uh, um, Saranja. And, and she seems to be playing it in a somewhat masculine way. I, I, I haven't seen it, right? I haven't seen it. But it is possible to do that. Uh, or you could lean into it being feminine, right? Which, again, I don't think Jodie Whittaker really did. I think she best played it like your mum interpreting Doctor Who. Oh, it's making noise again. Okay, it's downloaded, whatever it is, it's happening. Uh, and she basically played like your mum playing Doctor Who and had that kind of understanding of it. Um, so, Ian yeah, Sini was speaking with Matt Taggart Legacy Panel, which saw the BAFTA-winning writer appear alongside writer-producer Jack Thorne, British historian and broadcaster David... Uh, oh, uh, I'll, what was it? Alas. Alasaga, OBE, and Channel 4's for, former head of news and current uh, affairs, Do uh, Dorothy Byrne. All four revisiting uh, the MacTaggart lectures they delivered at uh, previous editions at the Edinburgh TV Festival. Uh, all, uh, all in all, uh, uh, in all of our respective lectures, we were all talking about British television is great. Well, if it's so great, then why is it? Why are there so many people? Why are there so many less people watching it? Right? You would have thought it would have. Uh, uh, if it was great, it would have been great, right? Uh, uh, it, it, people would would, uh, would generally speaking like it, which they don't, right? They don't uh, because of this attitude. Uh, British television is great. We want it to be even better. And it can only be better if it's much more reflective of the society we are as a country, as an audience. But it's not. That's the thing. It's become non-reflective. It's a, it's a black mirror, I think. It's a, it's a bit of a, a bad uh, 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 name for it. But that's really what it is. It's a bit of a dark mirror being, be, being held, held up to it. Dev Patel uh, in the personal history of David Copperfield. So where do I feel of, uh, fall on things like this? Uh, uh, if it, if we were in the era where where truth is really being twisted and history is being distorted, I I, I think the idea of having people of color uh, play traditionally white white roles uh, like we have got a picture of uh, yeah Deb Patel playing Dave, uh, Dave, uh, David David that I that that is basically okay with me right that's uh, even though it's historically completely bizarre. But, you know, look, Jesus wasn't a blonde dude. He probably, I never met him, like, <laughs> but he wasn't a blonde dude, right? It was probably like a swarthy uh, Klingon looking bloke. Well, I mean, like, you know, that's basically what it, you know, so we do change things to match our cultural, uh, our cultural perceptions. Uh, but I think there might be a push to, uh, uh, um, put non-white people in a, in a historical context too quickly and, and, it, and it stands out I, again it's standing out is 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 a real problem i i the the, the woman who played death in, in sad man again it's a great great example um uh who else got an audience uh, uh, it's better if it's more reflect so how would you justify that now like, is 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 the white population of uh, of TV seventy eight percent? No, it's not. It really it really genuinely isn't, and, and it's not reflective of uh, you know history either, and like relatively recent history, right? Uh, Lianzi referenced one of his own projects, the 2019 movie, The Personal History of David Godfield, which starred Dev Patel as a title character, as an example of how colorblind casting can leave a uh, fil uh, filmmaker feeling liberated. I agree with you, right? I agree with you. So that's why you've got to look at everything with a bit of nuance, right? With a tiny bit of... Uh, um, you've got to look at things on a case-by-case -case basis. 
I, you know, I, um, I think the woman playing Lucian in in Sandman, uh, uh, it just it just didn't didn't really work very well because she uh, uh, it's a it's a male character. She was playing Lucian is a stuffy old like uh, stuffy old uh librarian and you have an idea you have a cult we have a cultural context of what that looks like which is normally an, an older slightly effeminate gay i was gonna say gay slight, uh, slightly effeminate man right that's kind of like the 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 idea and yes the character has pointy ears i understand that it was a it was a fantasy version of a fantasy version of that but when uh the woman playing the black woman play, play, uh, playing the character didn't reinvent it to make her a black woman right so it just seemed like she was wearing a hand-me-down and it and for my money it didn't really work so uh uh, uh whereas jenna coleman playing constantine i thought that did work because it it re it she redefined the character right she completely redefined the character but like the biggest problem is white writers being terrified to write black characters you know matt smith uh right now is in the new game of thrones uh um will it last i don't know i really don't know it was it seemed to have some very grating feminist points going through it a lot right uh uh which i which i just found annoying right one of the things i like about game of thrones it was somewhat egalitarian in that everybody had terrible lives right everybody was abused right now women are uh, 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 abused a lot more right right in the in in the game uh, game of thrones world but the uh, uh best thing in it the point is best thing in it was matt smith why because he's a white male Right, and white males can be written with nuance, with villainy, with uh, uh, with positive and negative aspects. Whereas, yeah, white writers are terrified, absolutely terrified, to write uh, um, black people or gay people uh, uh, with any flaw whatsoever, because they they are going to be harangued uh, for hating black or gay people. Right, I think the best example of that is the TV show adaptation, sequel, prequel, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Watch uh, Watchmen oh, on HBO uh, 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 yeah, a couple of years ago. Now, any scene in that without a black person was freaking awesome. Not because I hate black people, right? But any scene in it, you had Jeremy Irons in it. Jeremy Irons was playing an aging Aussie, Aussie man, a, a super intelligent super, uh, superhero. Freaking awesome, right? Just crazy and awesome i really really liked all that stuff as soon as a black person worked on uh, walked on screen it died right because you could feel was it damon lindelof being terrified like oh oh no i don't want to get in trouble right you can really feel that there's there i think there are a lot more roles for black people on tv now uh, uh, and I think a lot less of a range of a role as well, right? I don't like, for example, right, uh, um, uh, the Runaway Bride, uh, Doctor Who Runaway Bride. I don't think you will be able to cast a black person as the villain in it uh, if that was if that was made today, which is I know, it, I like it seems so so, so sad, right? So, such a pity. Uh, um, anyway, so let's get back to it. the answer. Is um, uh, a personal issue of David Copperfield so Dev Patel as the title character. I would watch this, right? I, again, I I like uh, um, whatever his name is. You know, what's his first name? Amando. Amando. You know, see, I like him. I, everything he's done, I think is good. I would I would check that out. Uh, um, but I wouldn't check it out because it's got Dev Patel playing David Copperfield. Uh, but I agree with you. Listen, getting rid of boundaries in entertainment normally makes for better entertainment to a certain extent. Actually, that's not universally true. I think boundaries in entertainment also help as well. It, it, it's being constrained somewhat. Uh, um, you get more in, uh, inventiveness. I think one of the big problems with all, with all the Marvel stuff is they just like throw money at it, right? They just say, like, oh, here's, here's a truckload of money to do it. And you don't get any innov uh, uh, innovation, right? Uh, so I decided to go for colorblind casting, which is something that's been in theater for years. It's an enormous relief. I felt liberated. Uh, I didn't feel uh, I was uh, uh, ticking boxes. I just felt, uh, OMG, I have not had, uh, uh, why have I not had access to 100% of the acting community previously? I don't know why that, that was the case, uh, uh, Amanda. I really do not know why. Um but one thing doesn't equal the other, right? Having a 50% black gay 
uh, female cast, oh, female, you can get away with uh, uh, that, cast, doesn't reflect reality, doesn't reflect the audience. Uh, it's a, a really enjoyable step forward. Uh, it's not difficult. It makes uh, uh, it makes what we make better. I, I, I can't say how it can make it better, right? I don't see how it intrinsically makes it better. Again, it's on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, NSA went on to the miscriticism that the practice is woke, uh, slinging out Doctor Who as an example of diverse casting. Again, this is a complete straw man, isn't it? It's a complete, complete straw man that's not true at all. That the reason that it's failed is because of its casting. No. Uh, uh, yes, Jodie Widow was cast because she was a woman, right? It was identity casting, right? Uh, um, a man didn't get a look in. Uh, uh, Sigulan Akula, uh, whatever his name is, I don't think would have got a... Um, would have got the job as composer if he was white and called Reg Smith. From Clapham, right? I just, I don't think that would would, uh, would have happened, and, and I'm sad that's the case, right? I really am sad that that's the case. I think Shooting Gatwa uh, probably got the got the audition and got in the room uh, because uh, uh, because he's black. Yeah, I I think there was a real push to want to have a, a more diversified Doctor Who, which is fine, right? I again, for me, I have no no issue with the character being black whatsoever. Uh, 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 but I do think that to say that's not a factor, you're not being honest. And you, we can always tell when you're not being honest. Like why, why, why is Just Judy pro popular, right? Uh, uh, other than Just Judy is kind of fun, right? But she, she comes in, and she, she people come in and they, they give the most ridiculous lies because they were thinking, oh, they they can't they can ever uh, prove this. And Just Judy is like, I think you're lying, right? You can tell when people are lying. You can smell when they're lying. Why do people hate politicians? Because they're lying and they're always lying and they're always talking in sound bites, right? In pre process sound bites. That's actually why, why I like Jeremy Corbyn when I first saw him. I was like, oh my God, this guy sounds like a human bloody being. How can he be a politician as well? Right? I, 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 what am I more disappointed that, that Jeremy Corbyn didn't work out or Jodie Whittaker? Well, kind of neck and neck, actually. I mean, look, at least I couldn't say Jodie Whittaker was, uh, uh, you know, uh, very much into anti-Semitic ideology, right? Which Jeremy Corbyn clearly was. I mean, like, because uh, uh, he kept reiterating it over and over and over again. Again, this bloke I was talking to uh, um, uh, was was a supporter. And I was like, look, this is a longer conversation. I realized... It, to, 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 to have somebody who's uh, big in the, the Jeremy Corbyn camp understand how he's anti-Semitic, uh, uh, not the person that Corbyn was, <coughs> is, is, is like trying to explain unit dating and Mordred Undead to somebody who hasn't really seen Doctor Who. Right, maybe it's in the first episode or two, but hasn't really seen it. Um, you know, I... I uh, um, uh, uh, there's a lot you need to. There's a lot of ground you need to cover, because uh, uh, it's not not as simplistic as people like to say. And anytime they say for simplistic things, you know they're covering things up, right? They know they're they're, they're glossing over things. So yeah, uh, uh, it's not the casting, Amanda, right? It's not the bloody casting that's a problem. It was the uh, uh, everything else, right? <laughs> like, I, honestly, I thought it would be great, and I I haven't seen many people at all saying that uh, uh, Stuti Gatwa is an example of woke casting. They are saying that about Yasmin Finney, right? Um, and is it? I don't know. I don't know if, if, if it is or not. Um, yeah, look, they are they, they are saying that about, about Yasmin Finney. Uh, and, and look, she's a girl with a penis, which is a bit odd for an, an old person like me. I, I want to be clear, Mr. YouTube, uh, or Mrs. YouTube, and I don't want to assume your gender, uh, um... Absolutely, uh, I, I love it. Yeah, girls can have penises, right? I'm not arguing with you, right? I know that makes you very upset when somebody says they can't. I'm not saying that. I am not a doctor. Uh, I'm a the theologian. Although, we weirdly enough, one of the few places that uh, uh, science and religion have always agreed is there. Is there were two genders? But screw that. Screw that history. Let's throw that out. Let's go for something new, citing and and different. Uh, um. So yeah, uh, uh, my worry is that there, uh, that there is now uh, this word woke that the government has weaponized to try and stop all that. 
he said, uh, not really. Again, not really. It, it's it's the BBC have been very woke, right? Uh, uh, it, they they very much believe in this ideology that they want a platform, right? They very much believe in the ideology that it's good to have children tra transition, and you're evil if you don't believe in children transitioning, right? They very much believe in that because that's the BBC. Uh, 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 which is fine, and it, it, uh, but it, to, to deny that's going on, I think is silly. But you know, n where, you know, where do we start off with this? No one ever wants to admit they're wrong. No one ever wants, and like, why not? It's so stupid. Everybody's wrong more often than they're not. Uh, I want somebody to ask Conservative MP and Prime Minister candidate Liz Truss, do you want Doctor Who to just be a white man? No, it's not just being a white man. I mean, listen, the idea with it just being a white man makes me think that it would be um, not woke, right? <laughs> like, I, I would feel safe with it, but it might be boring, right? Right? Uh, uh, I, 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 and honestly, if Doctor Who was a white man, I don't think that's a problem, right? I really don't. I mean, uh, equally, I don't think it's a problem if it's a black man, right? I, 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 I It's... Uh, um, yeah, I, it, yeah. What, what's wrong with that? I've got to see a response is because uh, that's the thing we're referring. Uh, that's bit referred to as woke. The Doctor Who debate. No, 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 no. I was actually going to do a number of stories, and I can't believe how long how long I've gone on this because no, it's a complete straw man. It's a complete misnomer. It's not true at all, right? It's not true at all that Doctor Who is woke because they cast a black man as Doctor Who or shooting ca or uh, Jodie Whittaker as Doctor Who. Uh, Yasmin Finney, maybe. I have to see it first. That's the thing. You've got to take everything on a case-by-case -case basis. My guess is Yasmin Finney is going to be a character um, who is... I, listen, I don't know... The, uh, look, I haven't been to England in a, a number of years. I don't know how many people walking around who are, who are trans. I don't know how normative that is in the television landscape, in in the, not television, in the British landscape. I know it's something that's got to be accepted, and if it's not accepted, it's not tolerated for it not to be accepted, but uh, how normative it is. But I don't think it's going to be a central focus of it. And then we've got the talk of uh, this other woman. Who is it? Um, where is it? Over here. Uh, Rose Ailing Ellis. Uh, uh, as a companion, who I thought, oh, wait a minute, that's super not woke. That's just a uh, an attractive white woman, right? <laughs> Again, you can have attractive black women too, be companions. I'm fine with that. I mean, honestly, I think Capaldi's best companion was Bill Potts. Uh, uh, and, and yeah, uh, uh, have there been other black companions? Not that many. I mean, there's, you've got Martha. God, she is gorgeous. Oh, man. Freeman Angerman is insanely gorgeous. But then I saw that she's uh, uh, she's deaf, right? Which is the late, latest bit of tokenism. It's uh, uh, people with disabilities. I, I don't want to anybody to think I hate people with disabilities. And I don't want anybody to think people with disabilities shouldn't be represented in media. I think one of the best examples of, of, of it working is years and years. I thought that was fantastic. Uh, with uh, Rachel Madeleine, because it wasn't about her disability. That was just a tiny fraction of uh, uh, who the character was, which is reflected reality, right? I like uh, Nabil Shaban uh, Sil, I thought that was fantastic. It was a, you know, that was a villain that we loved, right? I genuinely, genuinely loved that villain. Uh, uh, and his disability, it wasn't about his disability, it was about his ability, right? His, his very, very strong acting ability. So this seems like woke casting to me, if, if, if this is the case, because I've seen her talk, and she's not very good at it, uh, uh, frankly. And I, I don't want to be a dick about it, but she really isn't very good at it. And, and I have, like, you know, quite a lot of experience with deaf people uh, le learning how to talk. I mean, not personally, I mean, I've always been, what's the word, not sighted. Hear, hear it, right? Uh, uh, no, I've, there's a few families in there. There's a lot of uh, uh, we're, we're my little community is a bit 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 of a hub for 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 deaf Jews. <laughs> Where do you find the deaf Jews? Uh, try 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 around, around around the rabbi. But like most people talk way better than her, uh, and I was found it hard to gauge her acting ability because I was distracted by 
her strange way of talking, which, I, again, I'm fine with it being on TV, but it's very hard to do it without it being a focus. I think I think it's like this, right? You've got to have a real genuine skill to be able to talk about uh, 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 ideals. So, so to have to overtly talk about ideals within your media, especially in the current age, with a uh, uh, skill and uh, and experience without it being uh, beating over the head and uh, uh, lecturing, right? Which, which it, it, and even with skill and talent, it's still, uh, uh, it's still very, you know, very hard to, but, you know, we, there's, there's lots of times we talked about sociological issues in Doctor Who from a left-wing perspective. Uh, Happiness Patrol, freaking awesome! I love the Happiness Patrol. I loved, uh, you know, the Peladon stories. It, yeah, it, yeah it, cause why? They were done with um, skill and experience. Well, I'm not sure how much experience ha Happiness Patrol had. Was that like his first script? Who knows? Maybe maybe it's just the age we live in, right? That could well be. It's the, the age, We do live in the age of um, low-quality creatives hiding behind identity politics to protect their work from being criticized for being low quality again i will point to uh uh, uh the current era of doctor who for that it, it seems to be a great example of it which is another you know famous woke trait so amando mate amando i don't know i you know you say you what you would like to talk to liz trust i'd like to talk to you i'd like to talk to you and have you sit down and watch some of this doctor who right uh, I, look i'm about to i'm uh uh Rewatch, oh god help me, I'm going to do it on double speed because I don't think I could do it at normal speed. All from 55, which for me is the nadir. It was like, at that point they'd gone further then. It broke me, right? I'm about to rewatch it because I'm doing a review of it tonight on my on my live stream. I've had to do this in two parts. I had to get the, the screen grabs in one because I can't sit through it. It's so freaking awful, right? But like, I'd love to see you sit through one of these things. Sit through something that's woke. That, that I, I call woke. Last Jedi. Uh, uh, or, or, yeah, uh, uh, She-Hulk. She-Hulk is crazily woke, right? Uh, 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 I'd love to have you sit through this. And, uh, yeah, and, and so explain to me how this is not woke. How this, uh, this need to denigrate men in She-Hulk and uh, say women are the bestest ever at everything, right? How this constant need isn't woke because it is mate it is so i don't know what's going on with you my, my guess is amanda you're an intelligent guy you're a talented guy uh um uh, uh who lives in a sewer of insanity right and and, and i just think we, we get we get washed away by the tides that we find ourselves in and we decide what tides to, to find ourselves in right we we get we get pulled away by by those different forces which i think is what what's go uh uh going on here but basically your point it, it, to nail it down okay to get down to down to the brass tacks your point is bollocks mate absolute bollocks and it's uh detached completely from reality uh uh I still like your work. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Sheila Birkin, the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. <laughs>